Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. War unfortunately seems to be something that is in our genes and throughout history animals have been integral to warfare playing a huge number of roles that extend beyond mere companionship. From ancient times to modern conflicts animals have served militaries worldwide. Horses are renowned for their strength and speed and their revolutionised cavalry charges granting unparalleled mobility and force projection on the battlefield. Dogs with their acute senses, loyalty and agility became invaluable as messengers, guards and even detectors of explosives. Pigeons, celebrated for their homing instincts, served as reliable couriers delivering vital messages across enemy lines. Furthermore, elephants were used for their imposing presence and ability to strike fear into adversaries, functioning more like living tanks in ancient warfare. More recently, dolphins and sea lions have been trained for underwater missions, including locating mines and enemy divers. The use of animals in war hasn't been without controversy and has sparked ethical debates regarding their use in dangerous and sometimes lethal roles. And sometimes, of course, those roles were just plain stupid and a failure. Take, for example, the story of the tank dogs. The tank dog was a Russian idea. They trained dogs between 1930 and 1946 to carry explosives towards tanks and they actually used them from 1941 to 1943 against the Germans. To begin with, the dogs were trained to leave a time of detonated bomb and retreat but it quickly changed to an impact detonation procedure which killed the dog in the process. At the time, the Russian army had no dog trainers, so they recruited hunters, policemen and circus trainers to train the dogs and they favoured German shepherd dogs. Of course, the trainers loved their dogs and the dogs loved their trainers. And the original idea was that the dog would carry the bomb strapped to its body, reach a target, pull on a handle, drop the bomb, run away, and then it could be detonated. Initially it was a success, but if they moved or changed the target, the dog got confused and no dog could actually work the handle that dropped the bomb. So they made it simpler by fastening the bomb onto the dog and detonating it when the dog got to the tank. They were trained by keeping them hungry and putting the food underneath the tank. And of course they used Soviet tanks. So when they actually deployed them, the German tank was very different. It looked different, it smelt different, and it moved differently. And instead of going towards the German tanks, the dogs went to the tanks they knew and rushed towards the Russian tanks. <laughs> oh, back towards the Russian lines. The Russians were forced to shoot them before they did severe damage to the tanks or killed more than a few of the soldiers that they managed to kill. Of course, the trainers were extremely upset by this and refused to train any more dogs. The whole thing was a fiasco and quickly came to an end in 1943, long before the conclusion of the war. The Japanese tried the same idea, but instead of aiming at tanks, they aimed at bunkers, and they called them demolition wolves. But it ran into similar problems. The dogs wouldn't enter the bunker, they would sit there, they wouldn't wait for the specified time, or they would run back to their handlers and the whole program was terminated on 17th December 1943 out of safety concerns and this wasn't concerns for the dogs. Bat bombs are an American idea dreamt up by little S. Adams, a dental surgeon from Pennsylvania. <laughs> the bomb itself was a bomb-shaped casing with a thousand compartments each of which had a hibernating Mexican bat in it to which they strapped a small napalm waistcoat. They dropped the bomb at dawn and the casing would open and the bats would come out and then of course they would seek somewhere to shelter for the day. And of course most Japanese towns were made from wood and paper and the bats would spread in an area of something to 20 to 40 miles radius and the little incendiaries they were wearing were on timers. The US Navy took control of it in August 1943 and used the code name Project X-Ray. The first test was a disaster. The bats were accidentally released and they roosted under a fuel tank and when they went off, they incinerated the test range. They actually continued development right up until mid-1944, reporting that it was an effective weapon. And by the time they stopped it, it was estimated that $2 million had been spent on, on it. And that's the equivalent of $32.5 million of today's money. But development was just too slow and it was overtaken by the 
atomic bomb, which presumably was much more effective, and a better bang for the buck, so to speak. Of course, there have been lots of various military attempts to make animals a delivery system for bombs. It goes right back to the Song Dynasty in China, who tried using oxen. And other attempts have been made using so-called kamikaze dolphins. The big problem there being that the dolphins just swam away. But numerous documents of animal-borne bomb attacks exist, in which donkeys, mules, horses were all used or attempted to use to deliver bombs. Pig bombs and monkey bombs, although they sound ludicrous, were in fact real, if not horrific, things. You would soak the animal in pitch, set it alight and let it run free, hoping it would cause as much damage as possible. The suffering must have been horrendous. Project Pigeon, later renamed to Project Orcon, was an American attempt to develop a pigeon-controlled guided bomb. The pigeon would sit in front of the bomb in the nose cone with three windows that it would peck at. When it saw a ship in the window, it would peck at that window and the bomb would be guided in that direction. The whole project was dreamed up by B.F. Skinner of operant conditioning fame. That is, you dropped a food reward for behaviour you wanted to reinforce. The problem was that the National Defence Research Committee saw the idea of using pigeons to guide bombs as very eccentric and impractical, but it still contributed $25,000 to the research. Then Skinner, who had the success with training, complained, our problem is no one would take us seriously, and the programme was cancelled on the 8th of October 1944. But pigeons have an incredible field of view and eyesight, something like 200 times better than human eyes, and it was resurrected in the 70s. And in February 1979, the US Coast Guard helicopter took off with a cage strapped underneath it containing pigeons so they could spot orange debris on the sea and guide the pilots in that direction. Again, it was a huge success, but seen as extremely quirky, and night vision goggles soon came in to replace it. Though there was a suggestion of replacing the pigeons with owls for nighttime vision. Despite the ethical dilemmas in using animals in warfare, there are severe practical limitations. Their unpredictability, vulnerability, and inability to grasp complex commands makes them, well, one might describe them as unreliable as assets. Technology offers a more efficient and humane alternative than use of animals, and the use of animals has often been impractical and, one might think, downright silly. Of course, a lot of these ideas were born out of necessity and desperate need, which is often a hallmark of war, but if necessity is the mother of invention, then she's not always the mother of good ideas. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.